little cubs, Mama Bear here with a special edition of Storytime with Mama Bear. Today, in honor of Mother's Day, I have with me my mum, Angel Wish. The two of us are going to be reading some more Aesop's fables for you guys to enjoy. So before we get started, I'll thank you all for listening as always. And of course, be sure to subscribe for more story time with Mama Bear. I hope you all enjoy and sweet dreams. The Vain Jackdaw and His Borrowed Feathers A jackdaw chanced to fly over the garden of the king's palace. There he saw, with much wonder and envy, a flock of royal peacocks in all the glory of their splendid plumage. Now the black jackdaw was not a very handsome bird, nor very refined in manner. Yet he imagined that all he needed to make himself fit for the society of the peacocks was a dress like theirs. So he picked up some cast off feathers of the peacocks and stuffed them among his own black plumes. Dressed in his borrowed finery, he strutted loftily among the birds of his own kind. Then he flew down into the garden among the peacocks. But they soon saw who he was. Angry at the cheat, they flew at him, plucking away the borrowed feathers and also some of his own. The poor jackdaw returned sadly to his former companions. There, another unpleasant surprise awaited him. They had not forgotten his superior airs toward them, and, to punish him, they drove him away with a rain of pecks and jeers. Borrowed feathers do not make fine birds. A mischievous dog. There was once a dog who was so ill-natured and mischievous that his master had to fasten a heavy wooden clog about his neck to keep him from annoying visitors and neighbours. But the dog seemed to be very proud of the clog and dragged it about noisily as if he wished to attract everyone's attention. He was not able to impress anyone. You would be wiser, said an old acquaintance, to keep quietly out of sight with that clog. Do you want everybody to know what a disgraceful and ill-natured dog you are? Notoriety is not fame. The Wolf and the Ass An ass was feeding in a pasture near a wood when he saw a wolf lurking in the shadows along the hedge. He easily guessed what the wolf had in mind and thought of a plan to save himself. So he pretended he was lame and began to hobble painfully. When the wolf came up, he asked the ass what had made him lame, and the ass replied that he had stepped on a sharp thorn. Please pull it out, he pleaded, groaning as if in pain. If you do not, it might stick in your throat when you eat me. The wolf saw the wisdom of the advice, for he wanted to enjoy his meal without any danger of choking. So the ass lifted up his foot, and the wolf began to search very closely and carefully for the thorn. Just then, the ass kicked out with all his might, tumbling the wolf a dozen paces away. And while the wolf was getting very slowly and painfully to his feet, the ass galloped away in safety. Serves me right, growled the wolf as he crept into the bushes. I'm a butcher by trade, not a doctor. Stick to your trade. The Fox Without a Tail A fox that had been caught in a trap succeeded at last, after much painful tugging, in getting away, but he had to leave his beautiful bushy tail behind him. For a long time he kept away from the other foxes, for he knew well enough that they would all make fun of him and crack jokes and laugh behind his back. But it was hard for him to live alone, and at last he thought of a plan that would perhaps help him out of his trouble. He called a meeting of all the foxes, saying that he had something of great importance to tell the tribe. When they were all gathered together, the fox without a tail got up and made a long speech about those foxes who had come to harm because of their tails. This one had been caught by hounds 
when his tail had become entangled in the hedge. That one had not been able to run fast enough because of the weight of his brush. Besides, it was well known, he said, that men hunt foxes simply for their tails, which they cut off as prizes of the hunt. With such proof of the danger and uselessness of having a tail, said Master Fox, he would advise every fox to cut it off if he valued life and safety. When he had finished talking, an old fox arose and said smiling, Master Fox, kindly turn around for a moment and you shall have your answer. When the poor fox without a tail turned around, there arose such a storm of jeers and hooting that he saw how useless it was to try any longer to persuade the foxes to part with their tails. Do not listen to the advice of him who seeks to lower you to his own level. I would like to thank my beautiful mum for taking part in this episode of Storytime with Mama Bear with me. It was a lot of fun to record and I had such a blast. And to all the mums out there, Happy Mother's Day. Sweet dreams.